So we're going to start, uh, we're in lesson five, and uh, you probably feel like, how did we possibly make it this far, right? And so, uh, let's open with prayer. So Father, I just thank you so much for what you have to say to us in your, in your word regarding these women and these cities. Um, so much about what we are looking at, Father. Things happening that we never thought we could see. And so, Father, I just ask you to give me wisdom and uh, help me be able to communicate the information that you would have us to know about these, this topic that we spoke today on the Babylon. And the two women that we talked about for a moment. I just thank you, Father, for the space that you have given us. Okay, so uh, we were right. Kathy, 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 your mic is cutting out. I can't hear you. This is Barbara. Okay, Barbara. Thank you. Less than five. Check and see, because I don't think this this is on here. Check the um, microphone, go to the to that, and see what it. It's what, it's going up and down. Okay, but, but it might be this. It's on. What's is, it supposed to be on? This is the Jabra. I don't see the Jabra on. Okay, here. so go to the this little thing right here. Uh huh. See if we can get it to. Yeah. Security settings. No. Nope. Okay. So um, maybe minimize. Maybe go to settings. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Audio. Here we go. It's not showing. Is it microphone? Should be microphone. But this is not. This is not the. Uh, it just says microphone Logitech Brio. Okay. There. It, I don't think it was turned on. Here it is. Uh, at, yeah, echo canceling speakerphone. Okay. And there we go. It should be good now. Can you hear it now, Barbara? Yes, it sounds better. Okay, yeah. good. Thank you so much. Thank I you. Didn't Thank you for letting right. us know. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Here we go. So, so here we are in. Uh, uh, Going to be talking about Babylon in Jerusalem. We're going to be talking about the woman who rides the beast and the woman who clothes the sun. There's actually more than two women talked about in Revelation, but these are the two we're going to be looking at. Um, these two chapters, 17 and 18 of Revelation, kind of set, are actually devoted to this false religion. And it does uh, sound kind of like the Catholic style of worship, is what we're talking about, priesthood and all these or ordained worships and all this kind of stuff, but it's not Catholicism, okay? Uh, it, it might sound like that, but that is that it's a mistake that people make to think that the Catholic Church is Mystery Babylon. There's a lot of people that think that, and that is not accurate no, at all. In my mind. Well, there's a lot of people that think that. They I think know there all, is. They all think it's about the Catholic Church. It is not. About I mean, there's the a lot Church. of like people that are in denominational, like non-denominational churches that want to think that. 
Catholic Church is the bad guy. It's not. They are the mystery Babylon. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. About ninety-eight percent of what they believe is just like us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They just have a very structured order of worship. Mm -hmm. And there are some problems in their doctrine, but there's problems in every church's doctrine. So. Right. And you know, that's an old hat too, because my grandmother felt that way about the Catholic Church. Yes, she yeah. was fanatic. Yeah. Well, my dad wasn't going to vote for John Kennedy because he was a Catholic. My mother Catholic. too. Which was really difficult for him because he was a Democrat. Democrat. Yeah. Democrat. Yeah. Yeah. That was my grandmother. It was just crazy. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. there is, th this is a, it, it's a new religion, not an established traditional religion. That's, that's one of the things that we're going to kind of see. There is a system of sin, but there's also a person of sin. So that's something that we want to recognize. And um, one of the most important things to know is that Revelation 14, 8 says, fallen, fallen is Babylon, which means that it cannot come back. It is not going to happen. And then Isaiah 21 verses 9 and 10 say, say that her destruction is complete and it is sudden. And so we also know that she reigns over the kings of the earth. Uh, but we have this issue with those 10 kings that we will be talking about later. So Do you have a way to um, turn it off? Uh, we also off. have um, John being in the spirit. Four times, chapter one, verse 10, chapter four, verse two, chapter 17, verse three, and chapter 21, verse 10. So 17, three, which is where we're talking 17 and 18, is the third time that John is in the spirit. And this is all happening in, this, in the sixth and seventh bowls, okay? So, Chapters uh, 17 and 18 is the destruction of Babylon. Chapter 19 is the destruction of the armies that gather in the sixth bowl. And then 19.3 says her smoke rises forever. So we're just going to talk about this city and we're going to talk about this moment. So first, let's talk about the city. So we see that Genesis, there was a lot of references, Genesis 10, Genesis 11, Revelation 17, Revelation 18. We, we know that Babylon, the literal city, number one, is built by men. What's the story about this city? How was it first built? We talked about it in Genesis 10 and Genesis 11. Who built it? Um, he was a mighty man. I can't think of his name. Nimrod. <laughs> Nimrod. Okay. Right. So what did Nimrod do? What was the deal with Nimrod? Turn, turn to Genesis 10. He wanted to be. He wanted, God. He wanted to be he famous. Wanted to be God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so Nimrod was told to do something, wasn't he? What was he told to do? What was, what, what was the command of God to the earth? Be uh, fruitful, not fun. Okay, so man was to be fruitful, multiply, and spread throughout the earth, and uh, spread throughout the earth. He's supposed to populate the earth. But what did this literal city of Babylon do? What was the, the purpose that Nimrod had? What did he want them to do? Worship him. Stay mm -hmm. in one place. Stay in one place, worship him, give him all the accolades. They start building a tower, huh? That's right to the heavens. A roll call in there. 
Build a tower. You think about I, something that really struck me about this when I thought about Nebuchadnezzar. What did he do? He had a he had a dream. I mean, I'm jumping around a little bit, but he had a dream about this tree, right? And he was the he was the head. He was the golden head. Then he had a statue dream, and it's always building some kind of edifice, some sort of <laughs> idol to bring everybody into unity under you, under your authority. But uh, this literal, literal city was built by a man for the purpose of being in direct disobedience to God. And it was to make their own religion and be their own God. That is the foundation of it. Now, in Revelation 17, this will be kind of in Revelation. So, we see that right off the bat, who tells uh, uh, John about this city? Okay. Okay, so it's Angel. Probably the seventh one, I think. Angel with a bowl. He's one of those particular angels. Shows him. And shows him the city. I always wonder, why, why did he need to know this? Why do we need to know about this city? It's about the judgment. What's going to happen? Okay, it's about the judgment. But what what does this this city represent? False religion. What do we need to know about false religion? There's false. <laughs> I mean, this is stuff we ought to think about. Uh -huh. I mean, what, what you know? What what is it? Our attitude supposed to be about false religion? What is our what is our concept of false religion? This thing. Okay. It's yeah. it's. Something that uh, is completely, it's false religion is worship yourselves, build your own tower, stay in one place. If you really think about false religions, there's a whole, this is, this is the core of what they are. Where was it seen? It was actually seen from the wilderness, 17.3. So you could see it in the wilderness. Now that, that's Zechariah, boy. That's a really good study. It's a great city. And who is over this city? So it says, verse three, he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast full of blasphemous names, having seven heads and 10 horns. And the woman is clothed purple and scarlet. Now we're gonna talk about her a little bit more. So I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time on that because we're gonna, we're gonna see information about her. But uh, we're gonna, just gonna do this first. Then we see that she is, a harlot? No, is that under the woman that rides, or are we talking about the literal city as a harlot? Yeah, we're going to talk. We're going to make the list under the literal city, but it's also going to be the woman. We're going to. We're going to. It's going to be both Anne, and we're going to see why that is. Um, think about how I want to do this. Yes, we're going to do it that way. Okay. What else do we learn about this city? Immoral. Okay. So, yeah. She's a fornicator. And how is this city adorned? 
gold and purple Gold and scarlet and opulent. Stones and pearls. Stones and pearls. So, when you think about this city, uh, what is the purple and oh, scarlet? Okay. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, if you saw, if you, if, uh, I'm trying to think. Like, uh, oh, let's just take, take, talk about the Ten Commandments. Uh, Charlton Heston, when they go in and they see the Pharaoh and and the opulence and the greatness of Egypt. One of the reasons why this list is about the city and, and not just about the woman is that what would be the goal of this literal city? What would be its purpose in this uh, last three and a half years? What would be the purpose of it? Well, would part of it be to make it appealing and to draw people in? Okay, and, and what, does, what does all this stuff show? People. What do people respond to when they We're see this? We're very successful. Mm -hmm. Yes. We can, they, can, they, can, they can take care of themselves. They can take care of themselves. See, this whole idea of being the city being built is about my success, my ability, my city. And all of these things that we see here, even though they're horrible things, we know they're horrible things. Mm -hmm. But when you are adorning your city with opulence, wealth, and all of the things that they're going to be able to, it, this, it's going to be an incredible looking city. People are going to want to go there. They're going to want to be there. Something to think about. Just like people wanting to go to Vatican City. Thank you. I, I knew there was something I wanted to think of. I hate to make the analogy to the to but, I mean, you know, but that is it. But it is it. I that mean, is you know, it. Vatican yes. City is very opulent and wealthy and yes. you want to go. You know, yes. Incredible it's something treasures. to see. It's a it's a sight. You know? Gilded with especially gold. especially people that are of the Catholic faith. Right. Hey, even people that are that yeah. part of the yeah. Catholic yeah. faith yeah. want to go there. I want see. to see the Vatican yeah. City. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. It's unbelievable. That is such a good thank you for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That that's exactly what and but it's not Babylon. That's the thing. I th I often I was gonna say it wouldn't have withstood the test of all time. Mm -hmm. I don't I mean I don't look at the Vatican City as being evil. No, 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 it's just right. I don't want it's just very mm -hmm. but it is that mm -hmm. concept. Healthy. It's that concept. I mean, that is very, very important. That's a really good, that's a really good thing. So uh, what is in her? There's, we, we looked at that in uh, 176, 1824, 192, the blood of the believers. Another reason why this is not the Catholic Church. I mean, they made a lot of mistakes, but uh, the blood of the believers is not in the Catholic Church. Um, what is found in her? Chapter 18. Who, who dwells in her? Kings, merchants. Okay. What about demons? Demons. <laughs> demons are found in her. Huh? I'm going to spare it. They skipped eight and nine. Yes. Yeah, okay, I missed some. <laughs> Pardon me? So I skipped eight and nine. Oh, sorry. I'll put eight right here <laughs> and nine right here. What was I thinking? I'm following my uh, uh, blasphemous names. are found in her and abominations.
there's going to be a real uh, definition uh, here. I'm going to go to 12. Uh, she's going to be destroyed. So let's talk about the new, let's talk about Jerusalem. This new Jerusalem, this literal city. So this is a real place. It's a literal city, okay? So who builds this place? Who builds this city? God. Okay. It's built by God. Who should, and who is the one? This is in uh, Revelation 21. Who shows this city to John? Another angel. Okay. I think it's the same angel. Now, remember, this is the third vision. This is in the spirit. I need to write this right here. In the spirit, 17.3. And then in the spirit, Twenty one ten. So, angel with the bowl shows it to him, and then we see that it's a. I, I just kind of think it's very interesting. There's two different visions going on here. Okay, uh, what do we know about this city? It's all really in chapter 21. He says it from a high mountain. Okay. Why? How come this is different? Because here we go. Seen from the wilderness as a great city. Seen from a high mountain. The sea was gone. The sea was gone. Yeah. But but I'm asking, why do you think this is the wilderness and that's the high mountain? Because that's God. He needs to be up there. coming down out of heaven. Uh -huh. It's it's I think there is in addition to that, what does the wilderness represent? Famine and stuff like that sometimes. Lost. What happened to Israel when they went into the wilderness? Why did they go into the wilderness for 40 years? Disobedience. Mm -hmm. Disobedience. That's right. The wilderness represents the greatest sin to be thrown into the wilderness. Coming from the high mountain is the authority of God. This is something built by God from heaven coming down versus this city that is built by men out of the wilderness. And it is a great city. What else is it? Like a bride dress for her husband. The bride dressed for her husband. And it is holy. Yeah. What else? This is the day of things. I apologize to everybody for that. All right. How is she adorned? 
is the glory of God. Mm -hmm. She's adorned in the glory of God. She has precious stones and pearls and 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 beautiful. She's beautiful. But how is her wealth attained? Something very important about that. She is adorned with precious stones like Babylon is adorned with precious jewels. She's adorned with pearls the same way that Babylon is. She's clothed in light, right? Mm -hmm. What is the difference in her adornment though? It's not in scarlet and, and uh, purple. What does scar what is what is this uh scarlet or right, uh, right down there? Right. Right back there at your hand. Right where your hand is okay. going scarlet. What got. is this? What is this a picture of? Royalty. Yeah. Okay, but what else? Think about what it is that she represents. She has attained her wealth through the abomination and sin. Mm -hmm. What is this bride adorned with? Why? You like that's the why. The glory of God. Mm -hmm. She's adorned with the light of God, the stones and pearls. What are they pictures of? The urn. Because they talk about the, all the jasper and all that that's in the in the throne. The picture of purity, mm -hmm. of reward. When the bride is dressed in her white with adornment, how did she earn those? How did she earn those jewels? By worshiping God. She didn't earn them. They are rewarded because yeah. of the righteous acts of the saints. Wonderful. I, I mean, when we are adored, everyone gets a white robe, right? Uh -huh. Everybody does. Is our robe, everybody can have the exact same robe? We're all going to be dressed exactly the same? Yeah. I don't know that, that it makes a difference. The crown. So the righteous acts of the saints are the things that adorn our robes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what I'm saying here is that the bride is dressed appropriately for the wedding. Yeah. Okay. And so are we going to be upset if mm -hmm. one person has more jewels than the other? No. No, why? Because they are no. Because it's the appropriate dress mm -hmm. for the person. Mm -hmm. We will be in unity. What will this represent? The devil. It's us versus mm -hmm. them. This is unity. This is oneness. This is adorned by God. I, I just think there's a real powerful picture here just in thinking about what it is that God is saying to us, being holy, being in the glory of God, dressed for her husband. That person's not dressed for her husband. She's ruling over She's men, dressed for her, for her, own glory. her own glory. This bride is dressed for her husband, dressed in the adornment that he allots to her for his glory and for her. When you said uh, she's dressed 
uh, with stones and pearls that represent purity and reward. The, she's dressed, the reward is for the righteous saints. The righteous acts. Acts of the saints. Righteous acts of the saints. This is in uh, First and Second Corinthians. When we stand before the beam of seat judgment, but gets burned away. Wood, hay, and stubble, right? Okay. Gold, silver, and sure. precious stones are not burned away. We're all going to have different gold, silver, and stones. It's, it has nothing to do with who's better or worse. It just has to do with how we are adorned by the Lord for the righteous deeds that we've done. Remember when we were talking about Laodicea? What was it that Laodicea's problem was? And he, did, he said, I advise you to buy gold from me, right? And clothes, clothing and robes. Right, I salve, all of these things. There are, there is a, there is an adornment that occurs in the body of Christ for those of us who are serving the Lord. Every single person is going to be adorned by the Lord as His bride, dressed for her husband, and it's all going to be unique. It's all going to be white, but it's something that we. Do not really think about very much. Do but we? the adornments will be different. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> you think Paul is going to be dressed more plainly than me? I think Paul's going to have a lot of adornment. I do. <laughs> He's going to have a hard time carrying it around. And it's going to be <laughs> awesome. Yes. It's going to be fantastic. You know, we're going to be rejoicing in yes. that. It's not going to be a bad thing. It's no. a good thing. There won't be any competition. No, indeed. No, it'll be good for you. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. And the saints are found in her. I just wanted us to, to think about that. Just to, you know, it's really not the focus, but uh, the her foundation. What is her foundation? Jasper, second sapphire, third chalcedony, fourth emerald. Okay. How about the names of the apostles? Oh, there it is. Chapter 19, verse 14. Yeah. And there's no abominations. What happens? Uh, to those that are found that are an abomination, what happens to them? They're not found in her, are they? No, no, no. they're not found. No, no abominations, no sin, no okay. sinfulness. Nothing. Yeah, and it is eternal. Okay. And we don't need light. And they don't need any light. No light needed. And we were talking earlier about there's no sea. Where does the water come from? Where is water? It brings the water of life. Where does the water flow out of? The, the throne. The throne. Have you ever thought so? <laughs> wait, wait, what is she asking me? What does she want? I know. Don't you hate it when the lady standing up here with the pen to ask a question? You're all like, what does she want me to say? <laughs> Have you thought about that, by the way? There is no sea. There's only one mass of land, one mm -hmm. land mass, yeah. which is how it was in the beginning in Genesis uh -huh. before they mm -hmm. divided the continents. <clears throat> Water comes from the throne of God. What water are, the, uh, are you going to be drinking? Holy water. Huh. Water well, like you've never had before. Can you imagine that? Mm. So our sustaining life, we will live forever anyway. But when we're drinking, we're drinking the water from the throne of God. Okay. Are we going to need, are we going to drink water like we drink? Is drinking water 
I have no idea. It'll be like it's gonna be like we drink. Like I think it's gonna be. Energy. I don't know. I think it'd be the best. It'd be better than Ozark. Yeah, we'll be. I, don't totally, know. I, think, <laughs> I think we will be totally satisfied. Yes, we. But what we're gonna also be what eating? We're gonna be eating. What are we gonna eat? What are we gonna eat? So there's a tree. If you look at the throne, there's a tree. The, thr the, the throne of God is there. Under the well, tree of uh, life, uh -huh. the river flows out from the throne, right from the tree, mm -hmm. onto the earth. So we're drinking the water out of the throne, and we're eating the twelve crops leaves of, mm -hmm. of the nations because we're not Jews. Yep. There's twelve uh, fruits for twelve tribes, mm -hmm. and the leaves of the nations. The, the nations eat the leaves for the healing of the nations. Mm -hmm. Did you need the tree of life in the Garden of Eden? Before there was sin, did they need the tree of life? No. No, because they, they had all it. kinds of other... They didn't need it. Yeah. They didn't need the tree of life. You think they ate from the tree of life? I think they did. But they didn't need it. Okay. I think they did. Yeah. They didn't need it. Why? Because there was no sin. They no had sin. eternal life with God. They already had eternal life. Why are we eating the leaves? And I mean, there, I, why are we doing that? Why are we eating the leaves? When we're in heaven, we're drinking the water and eating the leaves. Why? We don't need it. What are we doing? Adorning, adorning, obeying, obeying. Yeah. We are honoring God. Mm -hmm. okay. It's an act of worship. Mm -hmm. But everybody will do it. Absolutely. There will be, there, we will, we will take, there will be no one to take that. That will take the choice not to do it. We would never not never, do it. Never not do it. Why would you never not do it? Because look at how you have been adorned. Look at who you are. Look at what we're going to talk about the woman clothes of the sun and, the, and this other woman. Thinking about what it is that God has done for us. This is an act of worship. When Adam and Eve ate of the tree of life, what were they doing every day? Choosing life. Mm -hmm. There is no sacrifice going to be in heaven anymore. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be a need for any of that. But what are we going to want to do? Worship. worship. It's an act of worship. I think I, I, I see no other reason for there to be a tree of life and water flowing from the throne except as an act of worship because we live eternally. I don't know. It's just something to think about. <laughs> I think it's I think it's something to think about. I think it's a relief to know that we'd be satisfied with eating leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I like lettuce. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be the best salad ever. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be good. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about the woman who rides the beast. So she is going to be dressed with purple and scarlet. I turn this <laughs> dress of purple and scarlet. These are priestly garments. This is Exodus 28. Now, here's another point to make is that when did the high priestly garments come into existence? In Exodus, not with the Catholic Church. They have remade it, they have done things to enhance it, but the priestly garments that she wears is to uh, mimic the priesthood of the temple. That is her 
goal. So the purple and scarlet is in order to show people that she is the high priest. She is the answer to their problems. So all of these things that she's doing, this adornment, this great wealth, is to be an answer to their problems. She's a fornicator. And what else does she do? She sits what? She's at ease and she is drunk. What is she drunk with? What are the saints? Why is she at ease? She's sitting on the on the beast. She's ruling over. Okay. And to, to me is uh, uh, it's a very interesting thing. We see it from the perspective of, well, heck, you know, um, why isn't she afraid of her destruction? But why isn't she afraid of her destruction? Because she doesn't think the beast will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. She doesn't think the beast will be destroyed. So isn't that interesting? She thinks she's safe. She thinks she's safe. And, and how is this a... Uh, how is this a picture of sin today? What is it that people say? Worry about it tomorrow. Worry about it tomorrow. Everything's okay. Everything's okay. So nothing's happening to me. Nobody okay. can see what I'm doing. It must be okay. Nobody will know. Yeah. Everybody, everybody else does it. Mm -hmm. I'm not reading the Bible. Well, <laughs> they're reading it. They're reading it or wrong. they also see people getting away with these things, yeah. and they don't. They don't think anything's ever going to happen. Never see a consequence. Mm -hmm. That's right. There doesn't seem to be any consequence for what she's doing. She's supported by the beast, and she has on her head. What is her head marked with? Blasphemous words. Okay, she says, mystery of mother of all harlots. So on her head, that belong the great. You know that the priest had a ban on his head that said, holy to the Lord. That's what it's, she's mocking. She's mocking holy to the Lord. Her says harlot. She is set apart for harlotry. The high priest was set apart for God. So she sets herself on her head harlot against God. But the high priest was set apart for God. What is the mystery? So if you read that phrase, it says, a mystery, comma, Babylon. So verse 5 of chapter 17, mm -hmm. and upon her forehead was a name written. It's a mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. Why is that a mystery?
Yeah. I'm going to think today, aren't I? Yes. Can you hear the wheels grinding? <laughs> the wheels are grinding. <laughs> what did you say? Uh, <laughs> says the beast you saw was once alive, but is it now? And yet he will soon come up out of the bottomless pit. Okay. Yeah, she's thinking she's great and everything, but when you look at these words, that's not so great. <laughs> I mean, this is, I wouldn't want this written on my head. No kidding. No kidding. But she seems to be happy with it. So that's kind of. Okay. So we're talking about this, this vision, <laughs> this thing that's going on here. It's a literal city. Okay, it is a religion. So it's a system of religion and a physical commerce place. Okay, a system of religion and a literal city. So the mystery is not um, going to be, I, I think we're trying to, I think we're overthinking it. Mm -hmm. The mystery to the earth is going to be that she isn't who she says she is, that she appears to be one thing, but in reality, she's another. And I'm just confused the heck out of you guys. So she's, she's appearing, <clears throat> she, the one thing she appears as is a ruler that she's uh, in charge, that she has power. Right. I always think but about literally, it. I mean, she's gonna, she's gonna be destroyed. She appears to have power like who? Like God. But I also look at it from our earthly viewpoint and our uh, skewed visions that successful people are blessed. Thank you. And so this is a very successful city based on self. My wants, my needs, you know, my riches, and my power. So it would influence the world. Yes, because what's the condition of the earth? What's it's happened? Bad shape? Yeah. It's in bad shape, right? So it's taken... Look, in the three and a half years that it's taken, and we don't know exactly when they start worshiping in the temple, but I would say at least 18 months into it, right? It probably took a year, year and a half to get it going. And so, you know, they're getting everything organized. Maybe it took the whole three and a half years. It probably did, probably really did take the three and a half years because when they go in to start doing worship, what happens? The Antichrist walks in and, and stops it. So, how long did it take to build Babylon? Probably the same amount of time as it would be to build the temple. I so, wondered how they were going to get the water there. You know, that was one of our conversations. But just think about what all is happening on the earth. Well, you the earthquakes, so. the water could be there. Yeah, the because Euphrates is going to, uh, you know, I, I had read some, uh, Joel Ro Rosenberg has said that he believes that they're going to build a, a uh, lock system of water that's going to get from that, uh, that uh, sea of the Ar Arabic Sea up to Babylon, that there's going to be able to get water up to the city of Babylon through a series of uh, locks and a, and, a, and a very wide, that they're going to do that. But I, I just think under the circumstances that the earth is in, people are going to, we're seeing, actually, we're actually seeing a part of this right now. People are desperate for a leader. Yeah. To worship anything. They're desperate. Me too. I think, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think evil that will always yeah. fight to win. Yeah. Right. And in order to do that, they have to do this. They have to appear to be wealthy, successful, charming, beautiful. Right. And they will always fight to win. 
Right. And the mystery is going to be people are not going to, aside from the fact that she's blessed with wealth and success, she appears to have power like God. They're not going to care how she gets the power. Okay. They're not going to be concerned about how she gets it. They're just going to be concerned that she has it. Is that human nature? Yeah, that's happening. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Unfortunately. Do we ask enough questions? Why did this happen? Why is that going on? Do we ask those questions? Yeah, we do ask. Should we be asking those questions? <laughs> we, we, we need to be doing something about it. <laughs> We aren't getting answers. We aren't getting answers. Exactly. All right. Very interesting. So what is God going to do? He's going to repay her double, right? She will never rise. She will be repaid. sins I just can't even I can't even imagine double her sins and she will never rise she is destroyed eternally let's see Joe Rosenberg, I wrote something that he said. Um, Iraq is moving forward with plans to protect and rebuild the ancient Babylon and then also to rebuild it as a modern city. So the Obama administration contributed 700,000 toward the future Babylon project through the State Department funds. And the uh, Reuters reported that. The, the world, the WMF and the US Embassy support the master plan for tourism and preservation of a better image of Babylon. Mm. <laughs> Let's make it a better image. <laughs> better better image? Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's going to have to be really good. So, Daniel, so Ezekiel, and Nahum are all prophets that were buried in Iraq. Did y'all know that? No. Mm -hmm. They were all buried in Iraq. Yeah. So, yeah Which is Babylon, this. right? Where yes. Babylon is in yes. Iraq. Yes. Daniel, yeah. Daniel, yeah. Ezekiel and Nahum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All three were buried in Iraq. That stands for reason. <clears throat> Hadn't thought about it. But it what was it then? Iraq was, what was it then? Babylon. 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 Okay. Yeah. They're Babylonian. Or of the Chaldees, the Chaldeans. Yep. All right. So the woman clothed with the sun. She's clothed with the sun. And she is under shelter and protection. So the sun and the moon. And the stars, what are they for? Mind. Uh, Genesis 1, 4. Or is it verse 4? Uh, it's fourth day. Genesis 1, the fourth day. They are for signs and seasons, days, and years. I had to think about this. The, she is the woman clothed with signs, seasons, days, and years. She is set up as a sign. So a sign is like a token or a mark. What, what are some... Uh, uh, signs that we know of in the Bible. 
things that are set up to be a memorial or to bring to remembrance. Every time you see it. Rainbow. Rainbow. Yeah. What else? What's a sign? Another sign. A circumcision. What's another one? Jewish sign. Your hair. Passover. Passover. Okay. Yes. So think about the sign. Circumcision plus the Passover. Rainbow. Feast. The Star of David. Oh. Think about all of these signs, how they are all prophetic signs. They're all statements starting from Genesis, right? So shelter and protection. She is a sign. She is a witness. What is the witness of the woman? What is her witness? What does God say he's always going to do? Jeremiah 31, 35 to 37. He will always protect Israel. He will always protect her. Why? She's chosen. Because she's chosen. That simple. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Now, thinking about the woman, this woman versus this woman. She dresses as the high priest. She dresses in wealth. She dresses in all of these amazing uh Feats of success. Things of man, things of God. Right. Man's acts. And so that's one of the reasons why how she is adorned, how she is prepared, what God is doing with her. She is an amazing picture of God's protection. So the moon under her feet, this is in Revelation 12. The moon under her feet is God is supporting her. The stars. What do the stars rep ref reference? 12 tribes. The 12 tribes. And the dream of Joseph. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the sun, moon, and stars, signs, seasons, days, and years. Have you ever thought about Israel like that, that the existence of Israel is a sign of the faithfulness of God. Now, we say that, mm -hmm. but do we really understand what we're saying when we say that? I kind of don't think so, because if we understood that, when we're looking at this last seven years, what would we have to say about God's faithfulness to Israel? He's tough on him. <laughs> but he's not going to let him finish. He's not going to know, and he is going to protect them. He's going to protect them. They're chosen. They are chosen. You know, I think about, and this is, this is political, and I don't, and I don't know enough, of, I don't know enough about it. So this, is, it's amazing to me that in the United States. We have had people come up in, in, and say, we must always have an alliance with Israel, right. protect mm -hmm. Israel. And we have so much ungodliness in this country that I'm surprised that is stuck. But then again, I'm not surprised because I know who's in charge of it. But it, it, I'm just going, I just feel like someday, somebody's going to say, we're not going to do that anymore. And then I think we're in big trouble. Yes. Yeah. We're in big trouble. I, I do agree with that. I yeah. do think that the day is coming when we when America is not going to stand as it as it should. Sure. Mm -hmm. But that is not going to change. I guess I think on the on a world stage, I don't know. I don't know how uh, all nations feel about I mean I don't know how many of them feel about that, but 
but I don't, I don't know how all nations feel about that. Yeah. So. Well, Christian nations <laughs> are going to yeah. understand this. Yeah. How many Christian nations are there in the world? Well, that's what I'm concerned about. <laughs> not, sure. many, not many. Yeah. Yeah. Not many. Is that a sign of the times? Mm -hmm. I believe it is. So. I believe it is. Okay. So she is a virgin. This is a big, big difference. She's a virgin. Right? Isaiah 7, 14. That's right. Not a harlot. Matthew 1, 25. Luke 1, 34. She is in pain. Why is she in pain? She's getting labor. Okay. That's the same childbirth. Yeah. Is it painful for Israel to deliver the Messiah? Is it painful for Israel to deliver the Messiah? Yeah, because they haven't believed in the Messiah, um, you know. They have a child that they want to reject. Mm -hmm. And they'll always be persecuted because of that child. And they were always going to be persecuted because of the child that they wanted to reject. I was watching, I have a friend in New York uh, who is uh, Messianic. And we went to the uh, Jewish History Mu Museum of History. It's different. It's not the Holocaust Museum. It's just the history of Israel. This really cool, very small uh, uh, museum. And we were watching this video of this man uh, who was uh, driving in the hills. And he was, I can't remember if he was like some kind of reporter or historian or something. He was, but he was a Jewish man. And so they're, they're filming him and he stops at this point on this road and, and steps out and he's looking over Jerusalem, kind of up in hills above Jerusalem. He's looking over it and he says, you see all of this? We made this. Men, Jews, we made this. My friend and I were looking at each other like, oh. wow. I mean, the arrogance uh -huh. of Still. They, because they do not want to acknowledge a Messiah. Mm -hmm. He's not their Messiah. And they want to make sure that people know that this is on the backs of hardworking Jews. Jews. I was so shocked. I've never seen that. It was it not was, that I always understand why the Pharisees and the scribes and the priests, you know, were rejecting because they were they had their own power. Right. And they right. would lose that to, right. to the Messiah. Right. But the everyday people was were mm -hmm. the ones that I was. I know. So, I mean, like us. They're, I mean, they're like, yeah, the, the, they're just like the Gentiles because then they don't have the power of, right. of the hierarchy. Right. How can they not? <laughs> it's amazing. It was an amazing, it was a really good, that was a very good, uh, I didn't know that museum existed. It's not big. It's a small museum. And uh, and they're very like you know like you get too close to their to stuff they'll come up to you and you know no, they, touch it yeah 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 they're <laughs> oh yeah it's it's uh, it's intense uh, but okay so she's in pain she stands so she's not sitting she's standing she's supported by the moon we already wrote that her head is crowned. Now, what is she crowned with? The 12 stars. 12 stars, which are signs. And what is Israel or Judah? Jacob, what is it? Israel. Okay. In the Old Testament, who is the wife of God? 
Israel. 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 In the New Testament, who's the wife of Jesus? The church. The church. So this sign is talking about something that is a little bit different, right? Then those of us who are in the marriage supper with the lamb. We'll get to that later. She is persecuted by the dragon. So let me ask you, why is she persecuted by the dragon? Because she doesn't believe in the Messiah. Because he wants to destroy the child. Right? He wants to destroy the child. He can't destroy the child, but he keeps going after her. After her. Why? It's really actually, we've already said it. Because she's the sign of God's <laughs> faithfulness. See? Israel cannot stop the persecution, no matter how secular it gets, mm -hmm. no matter how much uh, Israel acts like the rest of the world, no matter any of those things, that is not going to stop the persecution because she is the sign of the faithfulness of God to protect her. And God is protecting her no matter what she does. Yeah. What should that tell us about God? He's faithful. How is that a testimony to us? He, he never runs out of love, grace, mercy. He never runs out of that for us. And why do we, why are we afraid? That's what why Carol and I were saying all the way through COVID. Yes. What are people so afraid of? Yeah. I mean, for heaven's sake. <laughs> You're well, they still are. Yeah. Oh, no. I mean, I walk around and I see these people that are like the whole family is masked up. Like, oh my and God. We are not given a spirit of fear. We're going to get germs from somewhere. We are to be overcomers. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about that. We're not given a spirit of fear, but a power of love and sound mind, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Why are we studying Revelation? Because we're afraid. <laughs> because, because I mean, people are afraid because, because they, they want to understand. understand. Like I think we want to understand. But we are we want to know to when it's all gonna. We want to understand. Happen, you know. But what should our study of Revelation do for us? Be a blessing. Give us a. Make give us, feel better. Be a blessing. Give us assurance. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yes. Blessed is he. Give he grieves, hears, and he and heeds the words that are written in the prophecy. The time peace. is near. It gives us peace. You see, our faith, how deep is our faith? What are we basing our faith in? If God is so faithful to a people who have rejected him, we still are. when we study kings and prophets, let me tell you, you're going to be like, what is the matter with these people? <laughs> I'm say that now. Yeah. <laughs> And, modern day stuff. <laughs> and yet here we are looking at is Israel is going to be persecuted no matter what she does because she is the sign created by God which is obvious faithfulness. with all the tension in the Middle East they're still they lost their country they were dispersed all over the world and they come back together they're still being attacked from all sides you know yeah. it is it is crazy and yet see the church doesn't really focus in the right way about the things that we're doing mm -hmm. because we should not be afraid yeah. we should not be afraid it's like come on now this is all coming to an end. We all know it. Mm -hmm. We know it is. It's it no make it feel good. I mean, to knowledge. Yeah. 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 It's it's pretty, I think. Yeah, because yeah, no matter what happens to us, right. or when it happens to us, I find comfort in knowing that evil will not win out. Evil. As much as I see it. Uh -huh. yeah. Man, I tell you, that's the truth right there. Really bad. Yeah. 
So she's being persecuted, so she flees to the wilderness. And she's protected there. God even protects her. I think it's, un it's unusual that we found over here we talked about wilderness being the ultimate sin. Yes, yes, yes. And then yes. this wil the wilderness is a haven of protection for her. Right, right. Yeah. So what does this tell us about why is she fleeing to the wilderness? Why does she flee? Now God's in it, but she has been kicked out of where? What city was she in? Jerusalem. 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 Mm -hmm. So even though she is in Jerusalem, she has to flee the wilderness from her city. But what is the city called? In chapter 11 of Revelation. Not called that. No, it's uh, chapter 11. What's it called? Sodom and Egypt. Oh. Sodom and Egypt. What mystically is called. Mystically called Sodom and Egypt. Why? Because it is, where, where it is the crucified. wilderness. It is the wilderness. Because what does wilderness represent? Sin. Sin. So actually, she's fleeing from the wilderness. She is fleeing from the wilderness, but she doesn't see that, does she? To a place prepared by God. Exactly. Which is even more extraordinary. Even more extraordinary. Even more extraordinary. Repeat that. So, chapter 11 of Revelation calls it Sodom and Egypt. What is Egypt a picture of? Desert. Sin, right? When you go to Egypt, it's sin. It's the city of sin. This is not the heavenly Jerusalem, is it? Why does God change, bring the heavenly Jerusalem down from heaven down to the earth? Why does he do that? Because the other one is no good. No it's good. Full of sin. It's not the false religion. Thing. False religion. What is, okay, what is, um, what is Judaism? Is it a true religion or a false religion? What is Judaism? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what is true religion? What, what, what is the foundation for faith? A true religion is based on, a true faith so is based on what? I was answering your question. I did I say was, <laughs> so what is, what is the, what, what is the basis for, for true faith? Jesus. Your basis oh. is Christ. Uh -huh. your, everything is based on Christ. And what I think it's based on absolute truth. Okay. It, can't, it doesn't oh, change. Yeah. It's right. steadfast. Uh -huh. It's there forever. Right. And, there, and there's a oh, yes. And what is Judaism based on? The law. The law. Okay. Is it based on Christ? No. What do they do? What are they doing? They're still living like way back before Christ. They was reject born. Uh -huh. Jesus as and Messiah. Uh -huh. So they and they don't do anything. <laughs> Like so, so they believe he's the son of God. They don't believe he's the son of God. They don't believe he's the son of God. They believe in his divinity. They think he's just a good prophet. They think he's, he's a prophet. Is that blasphemous? Yes, it is. How do you get saved? And we're told that the, the ultimate sin that, that can that can send you to hell is is turning away from God. Turning away from Jesus. Turn, turn away from Jesus. Yeah. And they Still do it. It is a false religion uh -huh. because Hebrews 1 God spoke long ago to the fathers through the prophets in many ways and in many portions. But in these last days, he only speaks through his son. 
Hebrews chapter one, okay. verse one and two. Are they having a hard time with that? <laughs> now, I'm not saying this to put down Israel because what no. is it that we know about Israel? They're God's people. What, 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 they don't use this Bible. No. They use the Torah, which is the Old right. Testament, okay. and the and the writings of the sages, yeah. the 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 uh, priests and the okay. the Mishnah. We talked some about that because somebody uh, said something. I'm sorry. Um, I, I I just keep going back to you in that little place that the man says, "I we built this because yeah. that is they did build that." And the new Jerusalem that God's going to bring is going. So what they built is not going to happen. It's not going to stand. That will be destroyed too. Was basically what that was. But I think about what we've talked about before with cults, and we mentioned particularly the Mormons. And I was telling, talking to somebody about that the other day, and I said they wrote their own Bible. You right. can't do that, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. And they still will argue with you. So I just think it, it, this is, is God going to judge sin? Yes. yes. Is he going to judge Israel? Yes, yes he is. Has he judged Israel already? Yes. Uh -huh. Is there going to be people in this, uh, in this uh, tribulation? There's going to be those who stay in Jerusalem. What are they going to do? They're going to take the mark. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right? <laughs> They'll cling to that. And then there's going to be those who run. Yeah, and they're going to run to the wilderness. It says only a remnant will be saved. One hundred and forty-four thousand. Well, that's a different group. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It doesn't give us a number on the remnant. No, the remnant's huh? different. It doesn't it give us a number on the remnant. The remnant, remnant is remnant. different than the hundred and forty-four thousand. Yes. And the hundred and forty-four thousand. That's set. a special group. That's a special group. Twelve thousand from each of the twelve tribes. Right. And they are the ones who follow Jesus. It says that in the end of chapter 12. They are the ones who follow him. Right? So they are a special group that God has anointed. And I think they get anointed. They're not right Jehovah there at the Witnesses. Beginning. They're not Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> well, what is the group that is of Jews that believe in Christ? I mean, they've got the name. A remnant. Remnant. That's right. They're going to be, now there's going to be, when we talk about the campaign of Armageddon, we're going to talk about when those people get saved because they're the ones that during the tribulation are going to turn to Christ. Uh -huh. At the, there's going to be Jews who turn to Christ at the end. Uh -huh. And they're the ones that are going to walk into the millennium reign. We'll talk about all that. Yeah. But I just think how tragic for the church to not really understand the power of who God is. Because I think if we did, we would not be making so many decisions that we make. Yeah. But would, for instance, decisions like what? Well, not taking a firm enough stand on certain. Taking not a taking a firm stand, stand, not taking firm stand on sin, okay. on okay. on because all of those things are uh, weakening the church. Mm -hmm. That's right. something we're really studying right now. And uh, this couple that took over, you know, our small group, they were sent by God. They're so wonderful. Anyway, and that's what we have been really talking about is and. Uh, Cole has preached on that the last couple of sermons, and you know, some people don't like to hear some of that. I know. That's exactly right. It's the fear thing. Uh -huh. Talking about their sins. Yeah, they want to go to churches that tickle their ears and make them feel all right about mm -hmm. themselves. Exactly. You know, and don't tell don't tell them that the way they're living or what they're doing is wrong. You know, God loves you. So like Kathy has said before about oh, yeah. certain types of sin, God loves you too much to let you stay in your sin. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Is there anything else we want to add to this discussion today? It was good, wasn't it? It was good. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thought-provoking. <laughs> <laughs> 
Tylenol worthy. I love it. I'm going to remember that next week. I'm going to say, okay, is this a Tylenol worthy class? Or not? I like that. I like that. That's good. Okay. All righty. Well, let's pray. And uh, I'm just going to pray. First of all, Father, just thank you so much for uh, Revelation, for the heart that you have for your people. Father, there's so much we fall short of, boy, howdy. We all have family, people we love, people that we know are struggling with their understanding of who you are. Uh, and Lord, I sure would struggle sometimes too. It's, it's not always easy to face uh, the limitations of my flesh or my understanding or uh, things that I want to do or don't want to do or whatever it might be. Uh, but Lord, you are faithful. And if you could take a stubborn, obstinate people that you call from before the foundation of the earth and in the very last day are still delivering your promises to your children, how much more so will you deliver your promises to those of us who willingly bow the knee. Father, we, we need to learn to trust you more and really be uh, committed to you in ways that honor you. Help us not to be afraid. Help us not to uh, be weak in our faith. Help us to grow in you, Father. And then, Lord, I also pray that you would help us, uh, even today, we have bad weather coming, we have things that we could be concerned about, but Lord, even today, we ask you, Father, to bless us and, and, and take care of us through the storm, take care of our families and our churches and, and those that we love, Father. And then, Father, I also do pray for Sandra's brother-in-law, and I ask you, Lord, to be with him. Uh, that uh, as he comes to the end of his life, that you would be there, that you would help Sandra's husband and strengthen him. Uh, and uh, I just pray, Father, that your will would be done in her brother-in-law's life. And then Lord, I pray for this class that as we go through the next few weeks and get to the end of Revelation, that we would end this class rejoicing in you, looking forward to your return and knowing that you are going to take care of us, that you're not gonna forget us, you're not gonna forsake us, you're not, gonna, you're not going to uh, leave us in any way, but that you provide perfectly everything that we need. We praise you in, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.